Okay, I'm live once again. This is Jochen Hyden, and I'm back with the Helsin vs. Hyden campaign, Scenario 2. I'll be setting up the 29th of December 1942 turn. Right now, nobody's watching, and that's fine. I'm going to send out my links to all my usual places, and then we'll just get on with it. I'm going to do my own thing here, but if anybody wants to watch and ask some questions while I'm uh, doing this, feel free to ask your questions, and I will give you the answers, as long as it's not something super, super critical, which I don't think there will be. So give me about 15 seconds to get my links out, and we'll get on with this. So when I say I'm getting my links out, I post on some different content sharing uh, discords and such that I'm streaming. And uh, I, I allow other people to do that on my discords as well. Anybody that wants to post a link to whatever there is they're doing, they're welcome to do it. Because I'm all about growing this community, you know? That's what I'm all about. Okay. Links are out. I'm ready to rock and roll. Hey, Renu. Nice to see you, man. Just going to be setting up some turn here. So, as always, I start at the top of the map at Aleutian Islands. And I go in a uh, clock, clock, uh, clockwise pattern. And I finish in China. So, uh, right now, we're just continuing to build up the uh, island of... ADAC is my submarine base and every turn I'm bringing in more troops more supplies more fuel and just kind of getting that all set up okay it's all set these guys are coming in with some troops next turn. Unload. You mean on station? You mean on station? There we go. Making sure that these uh, units are prepped for transport. Checking to look at um, these guys up here. Okay, they're finally training. And then some of these units are going to be moving to uh, moving to ADAC as well, but not yet. We can leave them on. Actually, we can leave these guys on rest for a while. It'll probably be a couple weeks before it's time to move them out. Nothing here that can move. Expanding. Okay. And these guys can go to Prince Rupert as well. <clears throat> they're already they're already uh prepped for ADAC. I want to get as much AV and stuff into ADAC as possible in case he attempts to go for it later on. Because uh, Helson does watch my Lodra campaign, and he knows that I use ADAC as a sub base there. So uh, I'm sure at some point he's going to start expressing some interest in that base. I don't know exactly when, but he will at some point. Okay, that's all looking good there. Ten 
take a look. So War Sprite's ready to go. And then Colorado will be ready in two days. But it's going to be very dangerous getting him out of here because I know he's got subs here. So I need to take a look at what aircraft are... What squadrons are ready for ASW the most. And honestly not or any of them. That's fine. These guys are strap moved to... Let's move these guys up to Prince Rupert. Because they're going to get shipped to ADAC eventually. And then this fighter command. Yes! This is slated to go to India. These guys can go to ADAC. We'll start moving them over to Prince Rupert. So I'm rebasing a lot of units that are going to ADAC. I'm moving them up to Prince Rupert because I know that he's got subs working around Seattle because he knows that it's a major naval base. So I'm going to change it up a little bit and relocate my units that I'm shipping to Prince Rupert and use that as a port to get him out. Just hoping to kind of shake things up so it's not so obvious for him. All right. This infantry division can get this one we can send to India. What is all going to ADAC? Well, I'll show you. Let me just move some stuff around here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm pulling... All of the units that are kind of along the edge here in Alaska, like all these little infantry uh, companies, battalions, and then I recombine them in ADAC. So all these little units that are all along the coastline here, like this infantry unit here, uh, we have a naval base unit here. I'm going to eventually pack all these up and ship them to ADAC. I want as many of these units to ADAC. I've already pulled stuff out of like Gnome. I don't care if he takes these little bases out here. I, I He can have them if he wants. Uh, they don't really serve any value, but I definitely want ADAC to be reinforced. So anything that's loose like Kodiak, uh, Dutch Harbor, I don't need these bases. I need everything at ADAC. So I'm packing up all these all these units here. Basically anything that has any value at all, I'm packing it. And if it's not got the right command, I'll buy it out and I'm shipping it there. Because ADAC is, is definitely the most important base I have in the Aleutian Island chain. So I want as many troops as possible. Right now we only have... Uh, assault value of 23, very little infantry, some guns, but a lot of engineers, and that's going to continue to grow because we have to basically terraform this base into something big. Uh, the port can go up to size 8. The airfield can go to size 7. That's a big base. Once I get it built up to that, we can use this for naval attacks. We can use this for all kinds of different stuff. So I really want ADAC to be built up. All right, so then we're going to, I, you know, speaking of ADAC, there are, there's a bunch of convoys here that we need to start unloading. There we go. We'll start unloading that stuff here and make sure none of these are actually docked. Cool. All right. So that's what's going on at ADAC. <clears throat> now I'm just going down the West Coast here. Looking for stuff that can be moved, if anything. Hmm. Why do these all say strap move? I don't remember why I strap moved them. Maybe to build up the base? Yeah, I think that's what it is. 
So we need to get these guys in combat mode. And that'll give us quite a bit of engineers to start building up the space. That's what it was. Okay, continuing down. I'm just reviewing all these units, things that can be moved. This can be moved. I'm going to start shifting a lot of stuff over to East USA. This should be moved. We can use this. All right. So I'm basically looking at any unit that's got a um, a a command that can be changed, and I'm looking to move it to India. Yeah, these guys. Jakob, what'd you say? Combat engineers are a waste for purely defensive ops. Um. Uh, okay, I, I okay. Combat engineers are a waste for purely defensive ops, such as fortifying areas. You don't get enough of them early on, not to use them in defensive line operations. Uh, Jakob, I I would agree with you, but at this phase in the war, uh, December nineteen forty one, I am in no condition for any sort of def offensive operations whatsoever. Uh, I am entirely defensive right now, so I do need to build some things up before I am in a situation where I can use them offensively. And I need to squeeze every point I possibly can out of this campaign right now because we're playing against a guy that is all about min-maxing and getting points. So every base level that I build up here gives me points, right? Every time I increase an airfield capacity, a port capacity, it makes the base worth more points to me. Since I can't use them offensively anyway, I need to use them defensively to build things up. And I'll get a, a squeeze as many points out as I can from mainland USA. And once everything is built up here and I have nothing else to expand, I can send them out. And by that time, I may be ready for some sort of offensive operation, but I am not right now. So um, the combat engineers are doing what they can for me, building things up because that's all I can really do. Now, you may not agree. You're welcome to your opinion, and I respect it, but that's the way I see it right now. And if I have any combat engineer units um, that aren't dispatchable or they don't are in a... In a unrestricted command. I'm going to keep them back here to build things up for the time being. Oh, this would be a good one too. Yeah. It's going to cost a million points to build up, to buy out, but that's okay. We're going to ship that over to the East USA as well. And it will eventually... Go to India. Okay. Do we have a command? I think I need a major command. Yeah. What can I send? What major headquarters? West Coast. Hmm. I think I'm going to send this over here for a while. To help build up units. This guy's still in the shipyard. Alright, so I think that's all we can do for moving units right now. I'm 
can move these guys. I don't need them here. This can be moved. And then the future objective set to Bombay. Oh, they're not oh, they're not stuck in ADAC. So somebody okay, so the chat said combat was provoked by the unrestricted combat engineer stuck in ADAC. They're not stuck. I put them there. They're not stuck at all. I need them there. Um, yep, I need them there. So not stuck. I have nowhere for them to go offensively anyway. And I need this base built up, and I need it built up quickly. So uh, they are definitely serving a purpose there at ADAC. And something else to consider, at some point in this campaign in the future, if I do choose to go offensive towards these the Kuril Islands or even Hokkaido, um, ADEC is going to be a, a jumping off point for any invasions into this part of Japan, if I ever choose to do it. So if anything, they're just going to be positioned for me to use offensively later on in a war on the north side. I think it would be a good distraction and a good little uh, diversion if we could land in one or two of these islands over here and just throw Helsin off. That'd be awesome if we could do that. So, like, uh, these combat engineers would be great for that. So, that's just something to consider later on. Is that having combat engineers for deployed to ADAC isn't necessarily a bad thing. I can use them offensively on the north later on. Okay. Good, good question. Good comment. Okay. Let's take a look here. These guys are training up. Okay. Let's see what ships we have in port right now. I definitely need to get the Queen Mary relocated to East USA. Anything else I can send? It's probably good enough. All right, so I think we're about done here on the East Coast. So here's that ship that got sunk last turn. Or not sunk, it got hit by a torpedo, I think it was two turns ago. Uh, it's still floating. I wanted to go to San Diego, but for whatever reason, it did not. That's fine. So we'll have a go to LA. We'll disband there. Patch it up in the shipyard. All right. Okay, continuing on. I'm gonna start taking a look at my my um my ships in East USA. We're just about done with the USA here. So all these aircraft are training. Nothing's coming due for to be moved. And anything that is dispatchable like this that has a uh, an air force that's uh, unrestricted is going to India. I need as many aircraft as I can get in there. So I'm looking forward to getting a lot of you uh, getting a lot of aircraft moved out that way. I'm gonna send these B26s. I'm gonna send everything, man. 
In fact, speaking of which, I need to start relocating these guys. I'm sending everything to India. I'm going all in. It could very well be a bad decision. Like, maybe I'm completely missing the mark on which direction he's going to attack. He could go for Australia. But if he does go for India, he's going to hit a wall of American firepower that he's never seen before. Um, so, I'm going to try that out. It could, it could cost me the campaign, but so be it. This is my strategy, and I'm sticking with it. I just recently decided on it. And we have basically a full year of gameplay to make it work. So let's see how it works. And the nice thing is about transferring um, troops and stuff to India, you're guaranteed safety from Eastern USA all the way to Cape Town. Okay, where's it at? Cape Town over here. You're guaranteed safety because it's off-map movement and there's nothing he can do to touch it. And on top of that, when you're moving ships off off map you can use full speed and not burn fuel and not cause damage to your ships so they're really there's no there's no downside to it like getting from east usa to cape town is actually really fast if you've got a ship that can go 20 knots at full speed it doesn't damage the ship to do it uh that's just the way the game is designed so you take advantage of that as the allied player and quite honestly i need every advantage i could get given uh everything that's stacked up against you at the beginning of the war we got nothing good going for us so that's why i do like that the only time that you're actually at risk moving troops to india is when you come back on map out of the penalty box right but you can go as high as karachi or you can go into bombay you can get pretty far up here before you come back on map and then you only have a few days to cover the distance between the penalty box and the base you're going to and because india has such um has such an awesome rail line. See these big rail lines up in here? You can bring them into Karachi, for example, and rail them down to Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, anywhere you want in just a couple days. Uh, hey, George. Some of you just said that's pretty jank. Are you talking about the off-map movement? Let me, know what, let me know what exactly is janky that you don't like, and we can talk about it to see if you're correct or not oh these guys are training up good oh how do penalty boxes work okay I'll, I'll give you an example so the question in the chat is how do penal uh, how do penalty boxes work well here's how they work um, that's just a, a name that I, I think I actually stole from um, I think Strategy Gaming Dojo said that in one of his game one of his videos like a year ago, and I said, man, that makes sense. So the this is where you go on and off the map. So at, when you transition from on map to going into one of these off map bases, you, your convoy steer towards these uh, these penalty boxes. If you again, that's not what they're called in the game. That's what I call them. Okay. Uh, your convoys will steer and then they decide where they're going to go into it and from there they move into these uh, These lines and these lines on the side of your map Kind of show you the routing of which way your ships move off map and then when you come back on map I'll show you what that looks like for example Your convoys determine where they come back on map and they pick the quickest most direct route to go wherever it is that they're told to go for example this unit here this AK mana is going to Los Angeles in four days. It comes on map. So look, it's currently moving off map. And that's that just shows you that it's moving from off map to on map, right? And when it comes back on map, it'll be at this hex in four days. And if you look up here, you'll see that the ship is going to come back on map at this hex, all right, in four days. And from there, it will move this routing to its final destination. Um... You don't get to decide where your ships come back on map. They decide. They're usually going to come in very predictable places and short, like straight line distances from where um, their their final destination is, right? And I'll give you. So here's one example of a ship coming in from Panama Canal to uh, Los Angeles. It's going to come on map at the very top of the penalty box because that's the closest hex to the final destination, right? Let's see if we can find another one. Uh, all these ships, all these ships I'm cycling through are coming to, into LA. So that's why they're all coming in here. But let's look at Cape Town, for example. I've got these guys here. These guys are going to Ceylon, right? 
or uh, they're going to where are they going? Colombo. See, they're going to come back on map via the penalty box right here. And the reason they're coming in right here is it's the most direct path for routing to get to Colombo. Let's look at another one. This unit is going to Perth, okay? So this convoy is coming on map in 14 days. It'll come in at this hex. And let's look at that. Down here, it's coming on map right here. And if you look at the, the routing, it's almost a direct straight line distance to Perth. Okay, does that make sense? Do you see it? So that's how the penalty boxes work. You don't really have a lot of control over where your ships go in and go out of it. But that's where they just come on map or go off map. It's a transition point. All right, here's a question. So when it comes to penalty boxes on map like the Soviet Union, can the enemy enter? No, the, the Japanese cannot go off map. It, that's just another benefit that the Allies have. Um, the Japanese cannot attack your bases or go off map to go to Panama Canal or or Cape Town. They're protected. So uh, the Japanese are restricted to on map stuff only. The, the Allies have the whole world to move around. To answer your question. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, so I was looking at ships at... I hope I answered your question, George. Thank you very much for bringing it up. It's a good learning learning point to, uh, to talk about it. <clears throat> okay. I was looking at some stuff over here. So I got these Canadians training over here. Ah, you're very welcome. I'm glad that I'm glad that you asked that question. It was pretty good. So what ship? So I got these ships coming in. Seven days, two days. Good, good, good. Two days. Do you see this? Look at this task force. It's coming in from uh, Balboa at full speed. It has burned no fuel, and it's moving at three hexes per turn. This one is going 20 knots, all right, at full speed. It's doing six hexes per per pulse, so 12 hexes a day off map. Uh, and this is coming in from uh, Cape Town. So see how fast? I'm moving from Cape Town to East Coast at 20 knots, burning no fuel, causing no damage to the ship. That's just the way it works for the Allies. Again... Uh, I don't know if that's working as intended or if it's an exploit. I don't believe it's an exploit because it's just a well-known thing that allied ships enjoy this benefit. So I use it because it's it's available to me. It's it, There's no rule against it in my campaign. Uh, there's nothing, nothing that says I can't. But having a ship that goes 20 knots between East USA and Cape Town is pretty huge with no fuel burning. The only, the only fuel that I'll ever burn moving troops to India will be when they come on map here at the penalty box to their destination. And that that's it. Oh, I'm sorry. They'll burn fuel from Cape Town to Bombay. You only burn fuel when you're moving from on map to off map. If you're going between off map, that's when your full speed and your uh, fuel burn and fuel ship damage is not uh, working. Only when you're going from off map map to on map or on map to an off map base then you burn the fuel and stuff but that's really that's the shortest distance you know so I'm looking at these ships to see what I got coming in ooh 17 knot ships man that's good moving 10 hexes a day good stuff And then what do I got in here? Just a little AKL. All right. All right. Good stuff. Okay. I think we're all set here in the United States. So I'm going to save the game so I don't lose where I'm at. Uh, let's see here. We're going to go work 
soap pack convoys. That's the next thing we're going to do. And save it. <clears throat> save often. Whenever you're playing this game, whenever you're working your turns, save as, as often as you can. Because this game crashes every now and then. And you'll lose anything that you were doing. So save often. Alright, let's start looking at convoys. These are going to need some escort. That's coming in. Let's go. So that's 274. That's 386. Okay. Let's go ASW support. Send that out to meet these guys. And then they will merge. Form new task force. So these ships that are piling up in Panama, we're going to send those back to the East USA because that's where we need them. Now, here's what I'm going to show you again. So I go East USA relocation. I turn their speed up to full speed. I set the home base to uh, East USA, and I return it. And even though it says they only have a range of 90 hexes, it will burn zero fuel. So they're going to move six hexes a day, and they have 60 hexes to go, so they will be there in 10 days. No fuel burn, no system damage, no damage to the ship at full speed. There you go. Okay, I'm just looking for my convoys, and we'll just start looking at each one and make sure they're all heading in the right direction. So these are coming in, coming in. All these ships are coming in. These guys I'm sending right to the East USA. Direct. Oh, but actually, no, they're going to stop the Cristobal refuel, and then they're going to head in. So all those are good. These guys are coming in the pearl. Well, we can start looking. We'll take a quick look at Pearl Harbor to see how that's going. I got a lot of ships out here, but I just don't want to send them anywhere yet. These are going to be nothing but... Um, Oh, you know what we can do, since we're looking at this, we can start getting these ships ready to upgrade. For example, this ship here has an 18-day delay, and in, but in return, we're going to get a, a lot more anti-aircraft and radar. So let's go ahead and get this ship prepped for upgrade. Let's get that converted to an AKE for sure. Yeah, we're going to convert all these to AKEs because those are way better, more, way more useful to me. Let's go through all the ships in the list. Okay, we'll get the Tennessee going to an upgrade because I don't need it right now. And we have tons of shipyard space in Pearl because none of our... He didn't attack Pearl Harbor. Unless that's where he's coming to go, right? Oh, what if he's coming to do a Pearl Harbor raid right now? Never thought of that. No, he, would, he wouldn't be coming this far south, would he? I digress. I'm, go I'm going off topic here. We'll get that ship upgraded. I think that's enough. Let's just do. Let's just do three at a time. Yeah, we'll do three at a time. I don't want to overwhelm the shipyard. Well, I don't know. I could probably move the pier side right afterwards. All the same, I'm going to leave it. That's fine. Got a lot of ships here. 
Let's unload a couple of these. Tell you what, I'll be right back. Uh, enjoy this uh, brief intermission. I have to go take care of something. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I heard a loud bang outside of my house, and I uh, had to grab the old pistola and make sure there's nobody trying to break in. But yeah, everything's good. Back to work here. I was just making a cargo convoy here to unload a couple ships that I saw that had some stuff on there. Actually, no, I want all those loaded up. Just this one can... Alright. Okay. That actually needs to go into the shipyard. I need to start shipping some of these AKs back. At some point, I will. Once I kind of figure out where he's going. Hmm. Something else I need to look at is um, what to do with these B-17s. I probably need to get them to India at some point, but I don't really want to fly them because I'll take so many ops losses doing it. I don't think it's worth it. So I may want to ship them. I wonder how many AKs do I have? So let's do transport.
yeah, let's 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 look at shipping some of these uh, aircraft. At least the B-17s. Yeah. So B-17 transport India. Okay. So then what I'm going to do here is take these B-17 units and split them up. And you may be asking, why am I splitting up my B-17 squadrons for transport? And the reason is, is that um, I can split each each squadron up into three pieces. So, like, if, if these ships get attacked by a submarine and sunk, I'm only going to... The ship, typically, you only lose, like, one ship during a submarine attack, right? Oh, well, I would only lose two to three aircraft instead of all eight. So if I load up these squadrons into into small pieces, I lose less aircraft if a ship is is taken out. So that's why I um I'm doing that. So, yep, now we can load those guys up. So transport and then we're going to load troops and we're only loading air groups. So I should only need nine. I think that's fine for now. So we'll use minimum ships. Verify the load. So each ship has one. One, two. So remove, remove. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nice. So then we'll accept it. So now we have three B-17 squadrons loaded up on these transports we don't need to load supplies so let's uh, cancel load supplies and then we're going to send this over to Balboa and for you guys watching for the off base movement again watch this when I go uh, return to Balboa see the line it's going to draw a straight line right to the penalty box and this is where it's going to go off map and transition to the off map movement this is be where it goes into the penalty box to do it. One thing I do want to do is because I know he's got subs here. I am going to do a little bit different routing here. So use waypoints. We're going to come south a little bit more before we go. <clears throat> okay. You know what? I think this might not be the best destroyer set up for this. I need something with a little more range than that. Let's find something that's got a little better range. That guy does. That guy does. Better. Okay. Much better. So that's all set up. This is part of my strategy of moving all of my 4-inch bombers to India. So... That's what I want to be doing. Okay, let's go ahead and and save this because we're good with Hawaii now. All right, and we're back to work. So we're done with uh, uh, Hawaii. Okay, these guys are good. But these guys are heading back to LA. And these guys are heading
Right now I'm routing convoys, so I've learned a lot of lessons from the uh, Lodra campaign about routing, uh, going through here and going through here, and it's just not safe for me anymore, so I'm not going to be doing that anymore. So from now on, I'm going to be going a quite a bit wider and further south around. It's going to add a lot of time to my transit, but I just have to do it. Can't afford to be losing stuff like that anymore. This convoy... Yeah, we're going to go way south. No, no, I live and I, live and I learn. So let's take a look at our current situation in the South Pacific. We have the Kido Butai, which is basically loaded here, moving due east currently. And I, I, I don't know exactly what direction that it's heading in. Uh, Canton Island is definitely a possibility. Uh, Palmyra, Christmas Island, all of these would be a, a concern for sure. Let me uh, take a look at this. So, if he is going for Canton or Palmyra or Christmas, I have ships at all of these. So, we need to get the heck out of the way. So, the first thing I see here is this unit that's got aircraft loaded aboard. We need to get the heck out of here, like, right away. So, um, I'm redirecting this guy at least to here for now. We need to get away. These guys are heading out. These guys are loading up, but I think it's time to pack them up and it's time to go. So we're going to load up all these guys here. I'm going to change this to a transport squadron. I'm going to pack all these ships up and send them back to Pearl for safety. Don't need them out here anymore. We got enough supply on Palmyra for a while. These guys are loading troops up. So they better hurry up. So that's moving. That's going away. We're going to split this unit up into into uh, threes and move these aircraft around. So this guy's gonna go transfer to base. Oh, does that every now and then? I'm gonna move. A, I'm gonna move a unit over here to uh, Savi. It's just giving us more naval search, right? More coverage. We're going to take another unit and move them probably over to Palmyra. Right. Again, more, more naval search coverage. So I'm increasing all the different um, naval search windows that I have. Which will help us keep better eyes on these guys. And what, whatever direction that they're heading in. And it reduces the amount of aircraft that can be lost at one place if you were to bomb them. So.
<sighs> but you know what? I, I just yikes! This is just not good. All right, here's what we need to do. We need to just get as many ships moving out of the way as possible. So I'm gonna take these guys, and we're gonna redirect down to. I'm gonna pick some random little bases out in the middle of nowhere to go to. Return to Anna. And that's going to be not to unload. And these guys are going to uh, follow these guys. These guys are going to head south. Yeah, so basically what I'm doing right now is I'm redirecting all of my convoys that are anywhere within the path of the Kirubutai heading east and getting them the heck out of, the, out of Dodge right now. Because um, I just don't know how far he's going to penetrate before he turns around. Uh, like, all these guys are packing these guys up. We'll call this an escort task force. I'm packing all these ships up. And we're going to relocate down to... Uh, let's go here. There we go. This is Mataiva relocation. We'll make sure that our float planes are set to the appropriate levels. Okay. So I'm just packing everything up. Okay, so Renu, you asked the question, how do the victory conditions work? Well, it's basically just based on points right here. Um, these points are what determine victory in this game. Uh, you get points for capturing bases, taking bases, for building up bases. You get points for killing aircraft, points for killing ground troops, points for sinking ships. Okay, um, For the Japanese to win the game outright, by 1943, it's called an auto victory. And how that works is they have to have a 4 to 1 point ratio by basically January 1st, 1943. If the score is 40,000 points for the Japan and 10,000 points for allies, the game will say that the Japanese have won. All right. It's called an auto victory. And that's it. Game over. Now, you can play through it. That does not end the game. The game doesn't necessarily just stop playing if that happens. If both players choose to play through it, then you keep playing. However, the way I play this game is that if the Japanese get an auto victory by January 1st, 1943, I will concede and call it. Because to me, the Japanese should have a chance to win this. If they don't win it by 1943, they're not going to win because the Allies' superior numbers, uh, material... Uh, Better ships, better planes, better troops, better everything will eventually overwhelm the Japanese and they will lose. So it's critical for the Japanese player to try, if they're trying to win the game, you really want to do it in 1942. And people like Helsin can do that. So it's going to be up to me to take only reasonable risks in combat and not lose stuff needlessly and give him free points. And I have to preserve points until 1943. If he doesn't have a 4 to 1 ratio in 1943, the game continues on. And, uh, yeah, then I can win. That's how the victory conditions work. It's all based on points. All right, so we've done everything we can to relocate these ships into a different direction. All right. All right, so we're unloading these troops here at Pentran Island because this ship is damaged. And I don't want to continue on with a slower ship. So I'm going to take this infantry regiment and unload it here at Pentham Island. And then from there, I'll find another ship to pick him up later on. Okay, that guy is heading...
All right, I'm still in the process of rerouting ships. Because I just don't know which direction he's going in, so... I don't really know where to send everything right now, honestly, so... You know what? Why don't we just... Let's see if we can do something here. Uh, and Denny patrols for here. Alright, so that's taken care of. That's routed. That's routed. These guys were going to go ahead and disband to get them off the map for now. And then obviously at Baba U, we're in the process of building up a major naval base here and I've got a lot of troops and engineers just landed there so hopefully we can get that going pretty quick I probably need to start working on this airfield as well we'll work on everything we're unloading all these troops so this task force I want them to auto disband As soon as we're done loading. These guys are unloading. So these ones we're going to disband for now because I don't need the fuel there. I need the troops off these ships. That's what I really need. So we're going to work on getting the troops unloaded. Auto disband. And these guys got to keep unloading. And these guys got to keep unloading. All right. So we're going to continue unloading troops here at Baba U. Every turn. All right, so far, so good. I need to try to get some supplies into Luganville. I'm going to send these guys, see if they can get in there. So dock, load supplies. And we'll set them to attempt to get into Luganville. I don't know how successful they'll be. Probably not very, but you know, we have to try, right? Just checking some stuff in New Zealand right now, making sure the bases are all building up like they should be. Okay, good. So, we've gotten this far. Hmm. Let's save again. Let's save. And we'll call this work in Australia now because we're already in Australia. Let's see, work Australia. Cool. That's done. Okay. Is there anything else we can be doing over here? I think so. 
Let's start talking about Australia. We'll start... Tell you what. We'll start at um, Perth and we'll go around. I like that. Let's do that. start building up this space the space building that's expanding okay building that up so we have the last of the uh, these are some tankers that came in from the Dutch East Indies that brought in some fuel we're just unloading the last of that Got more fuel coming in here from Tajilla Jap. That's the last of the fuel we got out of there. Got more fuel coming in there. So we have quite a bit of fuel in in, um, in Perth, which is great because a lot of this will start flowing over this way. Hey, Ray Yard. Uh, unpleasant trees anticipated from Helsinki next turn. All right, I'll answer your question. So the question is how goes the war? Any massive unpleasant trees anticipated from Helsinki next turn? Um, I don't know. Help me decide. We've talked about it in the in the chats for in the comments of the other videos, you and I. But this is the Kido Butai as currently spotted. And they are heading east. And I don't really know what direction or what their goal is or where they're actually heading to. Um it could be unpleasant if they continue east. It could be unpleasant if they head south. Because I have stuff all in the way here. I've already moved. All the ships and task forces you see out here. I've already been given direction to move out of the way. Everything's been redirected away. Um, but. He can move faster than we move. So if he wants to keep pressing. He'll eventually run down my stuff. And additionally. I have quite a bit of stuff unloading at Baba U. He doesn't know that right now. Canton raid. I mean, uh, yeah, but why? What what is there there that he needs? I got a one little, I got one tiny little base there and four PBYs. Okay, take Palmyra too. Like, there's there's nothing there. There's nothing to raid. Okay, he could be attacking Canton and Palmyra, and the most he's gonna do is kill a couple troops and, and blast a couple PBYs, and I'm gonna fly them off before he gets too close anyway. So. I don't really see what the point of these raids would be. So I don't really know why he would want to use the Kido Butai for, for these little know-nothing raids. They don't really amount to anything. So he could be doing a raid on Canton and Palmyra, but to what end? I have nothing there. It, to me, there's much better things to be doing with these ships than raiding these two little Podug Islands. That's my opinion. He could still be doing it anyway. I just don't know why. I just don't see the I don't see the value in it for a task force burning this much fuel and having this much firepower to be going after these little islands that have nothing on them. I just don't see the value in it. So we have to wait and see as the turns as the days progress what direction he's he actually heading in because I really don't know. So yeah, I. Uh, well, yeah, I guess he could sweep down this way as well. But there's, again, he doesn't know it. Like, we do have some stuff here, but he doesn't know that. So, um, look at, look at this. Nothing is spotted. There is nothing with any spotting on it. So, he has no idea that we have so many troops at Vava U right now. But... Since he's going to insist on pressing in this way, I'll have something ready for him when he gets down there. Hey, Tim Buck, how are you? Thanks for joining. Yeah, okay, that that's fine, but he has nothing accompanying this this uh, carrier task force. There's no uh, troops invading behind it. The only thing he's got troop-wise is here at Endeni. So if he's coming in to take these islands, he has no troops aboard. Uh, he has nothing. So he's, this is just a raiding party. I just don't know what he's trying to raid. So if there's going to be any unpleasantries, it's going to be with this in the coming couple turns. 
that's what it's going to be is is this task force over here causing issues that's the only thing i can really see that's the big threat right now until they're gone yeah fortunately uh tim this series so you, your quite your comment is that you're still catching up on this series we're only like 21 22 turns in so you shouldn't have too far to go to catch up uh, the lodric one is almost nine three months in game time 90 turns or so so that one has a lot more to do. This one is not as far advanced because the Lodra campaign is my primary. Well, I got plenty of I got plenty of PBYs. That's why I saw him coming for two days now. So I wouldn't say it's that bad. We've had eyes on him for a while. And we're going to continue to have eyes on him. Because everywhere he goes, I have naval search. So he's not getting away from us. We're going to see where he's going. But just I just... Uh, you know, I can see where he's going, but it'll, I'll be a day behind. By the time I spot him and see where he's relocated to, it's too late. He got a Congo. To no well, I had a different... Um... Oh, Taz. Okay, gotcha. Uh, he got a Congo to New Zealand because my, my naval search down there was not as good. It's better in this campaign. I've learned from that, and I've deployed aircraft in a more intelligent manner. So I can see stuff coming better now in this game than I can in that one. Anyway, I need to finish setting this stuff up. So we're in Australia now. I'm just going to go through some of these bases real quick to make sure everything's doing what it needs to be doing. Uh, renew, no comment. So the question is, what do you have prepped that could possibly go up against this carrier group? No comment. Can't talk about it. Something. Oh, why are these guys on rest? No wonder the base isn't building. Let's see. <laughs> Hey, Tim. Uh, yeah, so I actually got into this game by watching uh, Strategy Gaming Dojo. He's the one that I watched all his tutorials and I started watching his game versus Lodric. And when Dojo decided to go MIA and disappear off the face of the earth, I contacted Lodric and said, hey, I'll play you. And Lodric said, uh, no, why don't you go play the AI scrub? You ain't good enough for me. I'm paraphrasing. <laughs> he was more polite, but that's what he was implying. And I told him that he was scared. And then the rest is history. He, uh... We started a game after that. Sydney relocation, dock, unload. All right. Uh, I don't really like to talk about Dojo too much because I, I, you know, I don't get involved with his personal life. But we have seen him around. I've seen him on Instagram. Uh, he's alive and well, posting pictures of his beautiful family, and they're they're quite well. Uh, we have seen him posting on YouTube pages with his real name. So we know for 100% certain that Dojo is alive. He's well. From what I can see, his family appears to be well, which is great. I, I don't wish any ill will towards him at all. I'm happy to see pictures of a happy, healthy family. But as far as his participation in on YouTube and, and uh, playing games and, and tending to his viewers on his channel, he is just completely gone we don't know why no idea um he hasn't told us anything and he doesn't have to it's not our business so all i can tell you is that he's fine yeah good luck with the uh, war in a pacific tracker uh i have some tutorials on my channel to help you and then if you need help you can come to the uh discord channel we can help you even further Because uh, it can be complicated with the 32-bit Java and all that stuff. So if you need some help, definitely go over to my Discord and we'll help you get it working. 
Yeah, Rayard, he's definitely alive. He's alive, and from what I can see, he appears to be well. We just have no answers as to why he elected to discontinue participating, but he doesn't owe us any answers. He doesn't owe us anything, so... You know, it is what it is, I guess. I used to be all upset about it, and I realized, like, why am I so upset? Like, who cares? It's, <laughs> it's not my business, you know? He has every right to, to do what he wants to do, and participate the way he wants to participate and if he wants to bounce he can bounce you know let's see set all We need to get some supply into Port Moresby. What do I have that can do it? Nothing that I don't want to send there. Um, I'll tell you what. Let's do this. Cancel unloading. Take this ship out. And we will send these guys to Port Moresby. Yeah, uh, Tim, he, um, um, he, he left it up because it's paying him money still, because he's, he's, monet he has a monetized channel, so every view, he gets a penny or so, so maybe a little less, like half a penny for every view on his videos that are monetized, so, like, it's still giving him some residual income, there's absolutely no benefit to not, you know, keeping it going. Uh, he's just not posting new stuff, but like whatever he's got there is still, you know, paying him money. There's no reason to take it all down. I wouldn't. All right, so Australia's looking fine. Port Moresby, all we're doing is building forts, but we're going to temporarily stop because I don't want to burn up that. Well, no. We can keep going. We'll keep going on that. But if you need if you need content, Tim, um, Dojo's not posting any more stuff, but I sure am. Uh, I do this game, and I also, you know, I, I am in the aviation industry, so every now and then I post videos, some different things, some plane spotting and Air Force stuff that I work on, so you can watch those. I, I collect old firearms, World War II, World War I guns, so I like to shoot those, and I've been posting stuff on that, so you're welcome to watch those too. And you get this game. So this game, this my channel's got it all. It's got air, airplanes, guns, and Warren Pacific, so I got everything you need here. And I'm going to be posting lots and lots, so you just stay here. You stay right here, and I got you covered, man. Okay, so we can start going strat move these guys. All right, Australia's almost done, guys. You don't have to sit through this for much longer. All right, so we're done with Australia. That's set for now. Let's go ahead and save. And we'll do, we're going to go into the Dutch East Indies now. DEI. Yeah, I, um, uh, Tim, I love reading about the, uh, the HMS Hood. If you're talking about the, the Battlecruiser HMS Hood, uh, I'm actually, really into the Battle of Denmark Strait, the the Bismarck. I have all kinds of books on the Kriegsmarine. I love naval history, German naval history. So I know the Battle of the Denmark Strait pretty well, and it's pretty fascinating. Do you recall the name of the uh, the first gunnery officer on the Bismarck that uh, was the one that put the shell into the, into the hood? He's got a really cool name. 
Let me see if you remember his name. Alright, so what I'm doing now is I'm going to take a look at these ships that are coming in. I said this. I don't think we need to go into Port Headland. Let's just return to Perth. I don't want to go into Port Headland anymore. Perth return. We don't need to be going in there. That guy's coming in. So we knew we had a sub over here a while ago. Kind of right here near the edge. So I definitely don't want to go directly through there. So we're going to take... We're going to go a little bit further uh, wide around before we go down that way. Okay, so the gunnery officer on the Bismarck was Adelbert Schneider. He was a... Uh, um, a Corvette and Capitan, which is kind of like a, a commander. I think he was promoted posthumously to, to basically like a, a three-stripe commander. If you were going to translate that into like a U.S. Navy rank. He was, a, I believe, a Capitan Leutnant in the Kriegsmarine, which is like a lieutenant commander. Uh, so ABDA. So the question is, at least I don't have a disaster with ABDA like my other game. It's kind of split up. So here's here's some of it. We have the um, we have the Java and the Tromp here. We have Dutch destroyers over here. Basically, everything else has been evacuated out of Serbia. These two guys are probably going to get killed, or these three ships are going to get killed. And the rest of ABDA has already gotten down to. Some of it's already gotten down to Perth. And then, obviously, the rest of it is going to be here in Task Force uh, Houston. Uh, and that's the one where we had the excellent performance over here near uh, the Mol Molucas. We took out two convoys of his. We took out an APD over here and some unloaded AKs over here. Um, so, yeah, that's the other bulk of the of ABDA. I don't know where like the marble head went. Let me I th oh, I think the marble head is over here. Let's look. Oh, yeah, 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 check it out. Marble head is actually in Australia. So, and all these Clemsons made it. So, I lost almost no Clemsons this game. They're all over here, which is excellent because I love the Clemsons. They make fantastic um sub sub hunters. Around April of 1942, you can convert them into uh, destroyer escorts, and they're really good. So to be, I don't want to be lose seat right here. Um, destroyer escort on will be in four. Watch, 442. I lost Boise because uh, there was nothing I could do to avoid it. He moved the carrier task force over here in the Celibus Sea, and Boise was retreating. And because you only get one pulse. On day one, Boise should have been down to the uh, Makassar Strait, but because you only get one pulse per turn, on I'm sorry, one pulse period on December 7th, which I did not know, the Boise ended up right within striking distance of a carrier task force. I couldn't do anything about it. Uh, if I had known you can only get one pulse per on December 7th, I would have left it in port and waited for the smoke to clear and then leave. But I didn't know. Now I know. So I lost Boise. I just couldn't. Couldn't avoid it. All right. I really need to get on with this DEI stuff here. Just checking everything out over here. Okay. All that's looking fine. We do have these guys, which appear to be some sort of surface combat task force. D-Day. 
These guys are going to die. I don't see them making it out. These guys should make it. Oh, okay. Let's get these all placed up first. Let's let's fix these patrol zones. Cuz he's going to come back for these dot bases at some point. So let's be ready for him. Uh, uh, okay, so somebody, uh, Ron, you say that KB is going convoy hunting. It's possible, but I know where he's at and I see him coming, so we're scattering. Hopefully that's, a, we have enough time to, to get out of the way. So I'm looking at the Philippines right now, and it does appear that he is finally moving on Clark Field. Well, that's not great. What do we got there? We got mm, 1,500 AV. See how long we can hold out. That's probably more than we need for the time being. But we'll see. Okay. Everybody's building. Everybody's building forts. build any bases there okay so all that's all set um, I'm really hoping we can get these guys out of here I'm moving everything over to Bandung because you know that's really all I have to do but he's got at least five divisions on one, two. Okay, he's got at least four full divisions on Java right now. And that's a ton of troops. More than I can really deal with. So we're going to have to start thinking about how to get all these aircraft out of here. Um, and soon. I got to really deal with that. Ugh. It's a bang. I have one. It's a bang. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Okay. So let's move these guys over to Sabang. All right. So what I did was I railed out my ships. Or my um, my damaged aircraft out of Palembang just before I took it, so I didn't lose any that way. All right, set all. Everybody's moving to Ben Colon. Still getting what I can out of here.
we need to get these guys. Transfer the base. Bandung. Oh, it's their... I can't because they're damaged. They have to go to a... They can't, I can't move those aircraft to a base that's not on water. Oh, to Gillette Jap. We can go there. Transfer the base to Gillette Jap. There we go. So I currently have <laughs> nothing good. I currently have nothing good in Bandung, man. We are so done. Yikes. Yeah, we're going to get slaughtered. Yeah, he came in so heavy into... Um, he came in so heavy on the Java. There's just nothing I can do. Transfer these guys out here to Copang. Start moving aircraft while I can here. Oh, I guess I can't go that far. Dominion Monarch. Oh, okay. So the question is, did Dominion Monarch get out? Check it out. Safe and sound. We got her out of there, man. That was that was touch and go for a little bit. But unless he's gonna in, in, planning on pushing through here, which I don't think he is, he no longer sees it. So the minion monarch is damaged, but it's in no danger of sinking. We got a little bit of fuel out too, just for the heck of it. I'm sending it to Cape Town, and it'll be nice and safe at Cape Town, and we can move it off map when we need to on in February. But I might be able to get it over to. Um, East Coast at least wants to move a little bit of troops out. Get maybe one run on it before it's too late. So yeah, Dominion Monarch is safe and sound. We got her out. Okay, so I've done all I can with these guys. And then these aircraft here, what do I want to do with them? I say leave them for now. Alright, I gotta sneeze. I gotta turn my mic off. Hold on. Okay, I didn't want to blow out anybody's eardrums with that. Hmm. These guys need to be doing some naval search. Cool. Let's get these guys back up in the air. Right. In, a, in a couple turns, I'm going to have to think about uh, evacuating Surabaya here. And not yet. All right. Let's see what we got for ships here. So we got the Porpoise. Two days and we're going to move it out. Porpoise is actually a survivor of Manila. It's the only ship that survived out of Manila Bay. The rest of them were sunk. So I'm really happy that the porpoise is actually still afloat. But we're not going to stick around and try to repair it here. It's too dangerous. So I'm going to get it up and get it out. Move down to Perth and build, fix it there. All right, so take a look at this. These are B-17s that I'm currently in the process of flying to India. So I'm going to go ahead and move those now. So we're going to transfer to base. And we should be able to get to Calcutta. Okay, that one's out. I'm going to move these guys. 
So they have six. Let's see if we take any ops losses moving these. I hope we don't. And nope, didn't lose one there. We're going to move these B-17Ds, another set. So they have four serviceable. Let's see if four land. Uh, yep, we got four. So far, so good. I'm just transferring these aircraft. These are actually coming out of Australia, and I'm in the process of moving them right now. So six. Let's see if we get six out. Moving these to Calcutta. And six made it. Excellent. So we lost no aircraft to ops losses uh, on that this turn. So we have, it looks like a total of four B-17s still at Balak Poppin, but we have enough aviation support that we should get them fixed up in a couple days, and we'll continue moving those back this way. And then now that we're in India, I will continue moving those B-17s to Bombay. That's where they're going to be based out of for now, just to start training up and getting ready. So as you can see, I already have B-17s here. I want to move all of my four-engine bombers into India for just defense. Why not? I got a couple. I got Gaian. Cool. So B-17s so far, we got um, 30 of them. 30 of them in India here at Bombay. And then we have another... 20 here so yeah we're gonna have 50 b-17s in bomb in bombay pretty soon plus another bunch coming in further south so uh the transition to I india with my b-17s is going well i'm gonna make sure i didn't leave any accidentally in australia which i didn't You know what? Maybe we can make something happen here. Let's see if we can get in there. Cool. All right. So that's all set. That's all set. Kandari's building forts. Yeah. We're looking good here. Take a look up here. We're just kind of biding our time out here. All these troops in in uh, Malaya are all doomed. They're just kind of hanging out, waiting to die. We can move these guys to Taiping. So all to. March. There's really not a whole lot left for us here. And then these guys are all transporting the uh, 224 group RAF over to Rangoon. And from Rangoon, we're going to Strat move these guys to Lashio. Cool. All right, I think we're about done in the Dutch East Indies. So I think what I'm going to do here is save this. And, and I'm going to take about a 30 second break and I'll be right back. And then we're going to start looking at Cape Town, uh, Cape Town, India, all those uh, off map bases, finish up India stuff, and then we'll finish China. We should be done pretty soon. Uh, usually when I get to this point in the, in the turn setup, it's all downhill from here. So uh, I'll be right back, guys. I'm just going to go uh, get a, a quick refreshment and then I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Thank you guys so much for waiting. For those of you who stuck around, I'm back. Uh, let me get caught up on the chat here. So, Renu asked, are you going to bomb Burma from Calcutta in the future? Uh, all, all, yeah, absolutely. Why not? Uh, so, Calcutta is 16 hexes away from Rangoon, which is within bombing range of a B-17. Granted, it's, it's not ideal because it's... Oh no, it is within our normal radius. So yeah, absolutely we can bomb. Let me see if a B-17E can do that. Yeah, 15 hexes. So uh, the B-17Ds can get through with normal. The B-17Es are going to be extended range. And of course, when you go extended range... Uh, right, so normal radius, you get this. You get the full default bomb load. So 4,000 pounds of bombs. If I go to the extended range, right, anything past 17, for example, on a B-17D, uh, it reduces the bomb load by half on this particular aircraft. So I really don't like bombing like that if I don't have to. But, you know, if I need to bomb Rangoon or something else, I can do it. So, yeah, that's why I'm moving the B-17s to India because, as I've previously stated, I strongly believe that Helsinki's main thrust in this campaign will be to try to take China take Burma and India so I need as much force here as possible to stop him so I figured the B-17s can be best used right now in India for the eventual invasion when it comes but we can also use it for offensive operations later on when we're ready to do it uh, he's gonna take Rangoon he's gonna take all these bases and he's gonna start marching towards Lashio to try to continue cutting the Burma road and that is definitely within the range of Calcutta with B-17s. And Calcutta is already at a size 7 airfield because I've already built it up to that. So we're more than capable of operating uh, everything we want out of here. I have an air HQ here, right? Where's it at? There, I have air HQ, so then we know for a fact then that the B-17s will not will be better coordinated because we have one. So I just want that offensive firepower concentrated in a place where I intend to be strong. Um, if Helsin comes in heavy in Australia, I'll have the forces to, to slow him down. If he doesn't, I'll have the forces for a strong counterattack through Burma at, at, after him. So it, it's win-win for me. Either either we meet the threat and we stop it, or we go on the offensive from here. That's, that's, the, that's the thought process anyway. Let me continue on now. I think we need to start deploying some sort of ASW here. Just check it on his task forces. All right, we need to route these guys differently too, because he's got subs operating here in Cochin and Trivandrum. So we're gonna have to go way wide and avoid those subs. So this guy, that guy, and this guy. Yeah, we don't want to lose all these, right? So let's put some escorts in here too. And we'll set task force routing. We're gonna go out wide. So I'm starting a, a slow evacuation of Ceylon. As much as I hate to even think about giving it up, I don't think I can hold Ceylon even if I wanted to. So, rather than lose a lot of troops and a lot of um, ships and supplies here, I'm starting to pull the fuel out. I'm starting to pull uh, the headquarters out. That kind of stuff that is useful to me elsewhere. And we're going to start evacuating these things back to the mainland.
just can't afford to lose them. Especially like these, uh, this Eastern Fleet, this Air HQ. I need these guys, man. I can't afford to be losing these right now. So I'll start shipping all this stuff out here soon. All these aircraft are going to have to go. Oh, these guys are good. We can start trans, trans doing ASW training now. Catalina 1. Very good naval search. So let's start getting these guys on some ASW training. Swordfish. Still working. Okay. So we got Ceylon more or less taken care of. Let's take a look at Cape Town. See what we got coming on map here. Perth. Ceylon. Okay, these are going to Bombay. These guys are going to Colombo. But we'll redirect them. We're going to redirect these guys to further up north. These guys come on Colombo eight days. All right. This guy is loading up for Karachi. Okay. This is a CS convoy. So this is a CS convoy. Um, this one's set up and it's going to be running back and forth to and from um, Cape Town to Karachi, bringing in supplies. And I have it coming up way north up here just to give myself a fighting chance to avoid a lot of his subs and such, but he probably knows we're doing that. So what I need to do is change the routing so we don't go in a very predictable path. I'll get around to that. And then this convoy is... So now we're going to we're gonna take these guys and send them back to Eastern USA. Sultan, hello. Nice to see you. Thanks for showing up. Uh, we're finishing up some, some off-base stuff here near um, Cape Town and, and Aiden and all that. Yeah, you're late. You're late, man. I've been, I've been almost two hours into this, an hour and 45 minutes so far. That's quite all right. These guys are heading back to... Oh, I need to split these up. Okay. That's guys. Gonna, that's gonna slow them down. So there we go. And then these guys are in Cape Town. Let's disband these. Let's see what else can I put in this task force to head back. Whatever is fast. So any of these fourteens. We're going to send all these back to Eastern. These are going to East USA. And these ships are going to be used to transport the troops and aircraft back to India. Because they move eight hexes a day. All right. And then what else do we got here? What else can we ship back? Let's go transport. Let's go by speed. This guy for sure. This guy moves five hexes a day, so he's going to go East USA. Relocate him to East USA. Yeah, I'm relocating all these ships to East USA um, to start moving my troops and the aircraft back. So the more ships I get over there, the better. And then we got a bunch of these 12 pointers and such. We can use these for. Cargo task forces for. Let's see. Let's see. Not in task forces. All right. So these guys can be used. We'll do 10 ship convoys. All right. This is going to be CTCS. Karachi su supply two. 
su load supplies. Ta uh, destination will be Karachi. And make it a CS. And then we'll do one more. All right, so basically I'm going to get these guys that have enough endurance to make a round trip. And this is going to be CTCS Karachi Supply 3. Load supplies. Destination is going to be Karachi. CS. Awesome. Uh, and this guy can take oh, There's a single ship that I wanted. Where was it at? Well, maybe not. Why can't I load this guy up? Okay, put that guy in there too. Nice. All right, so we got all the ships packed up and ready to go. Leave it a couple AKs in Cape Town, no big deal. If anything, I could send them up here to grab some fuel. It's probably not even worth it. I'd probably burn as much fuel as I would get doing it. So, all right, that's done. We have a lot of APs here. I think I want to leave these guys, though. For transporting stuff into Karachi. Because I get a lot of reinforcements in Aiden. So I'll keep all these ships here. Aiden is looking fine. Okay. Just checking Abaddon now. Fuel for Karachi. Hmm. I'd like to use these ships for something else. Uh, let's see. Sultan, um, how much supply do you send to India, Colombo, and Rangoon? I'm sending nothing to Rangoon because I'm abandoning it. I'm sending nothing to Colombo because I'm abandoning it. And I'm sending everything to India. Uh, the question was, how much supply do I send to India, Colombo, and Rangoon? And what are the ratios that I would distribute it? Since I'm giving up, since I'm abandoning Ceylon and Rangoon, nothing's going there. In fact, I'm pulling stuff out of there, actually. Because I can't defend Ceylon, so I'm not even going to bother.
right, so that's a 267. So if I make a new... Nope. Won't even, won't even be any good. All right. That's not doing me any good. So far, so good. Okay. So, so far, so good over here. I split these up, right? Okay. India is almost done. I just need to look at a couple little things real quick. These guys just got dropped off. We'll send these guys down here to Calcutta. These guys definitely going to Calcutta. That's basically all I can... And these guys... Wait, do I have enough uh, garrison there? What is the garrison? The crutch fort... Yeah, these guys need to stay then. All right. These guys will stay. Ah, oh, man, it's just not enough troops in India right now. Wish I didn't have to leave troops up here. Yep, can't pull the garrisons out of here. Well, this one I can. How did I not see these guys before? Send those down there. Okay, India's looking really good now. So I think we're about done in India. We'll take a quick peek. We'll take a quick peek here, Calcutta. I have a lot of units moving around. That's fine. So any spare engineers, though, need to be working on the fort level. Okay, which they are. We have a lot of aircraft. A lot of aircraft in... Um, here in uh, Calcutta right now. So enough to repel an invasion if we need to. So in Calcutta, we have 222 fighters, 122 level bombers, 43 torpedo bombers, and two transport planes. So uh, over 360 some odd aircraft in Calcutta right now. And we're not going to stay there indefinitely, but I just have them located here just because, you know. And they're all training right now. Just going through some of the training numbers right now. Hey, 
Yeah. That's good. And a lot of American fighters coming on the way soon. <clears throat> and I got these guys already here in Kalimio. I think we can send... I want to send these guys over to Kalemio. Start building that base up. Because I'm going to establish a line of defense for India in Burma all up through here. That's what I'm looking at Lashio right now. Uh, Lashio is going to be very key to my defense of the back door into China plus going into India this way. So I need to get this built up quickly. I need bigger. I need a bigger airfield. I need um, bigger fort. I do have a lot of infantry here, so that will help for a while. So I'm gonna save this, and we're gonna finish up here in in China. I don't have much more to do, so we'll say work China. Just about done, guys. Thanks for all of you guys have stuck around for so long. I've been live streaming now for two hours. And that's that's me slowing down to talk too. I can only get it turned down a little faster than this, but when I have to talk, it you know slows things down, and that's okay. I like talking. There's nothing there to build it. Alright, so there's not much for us to really do. Although we need to start sending a lot more troops. So we need to start moving these... These units here quickly. Because he's coming for Chungking from the north. So I need to start moving as much as I can to check his advance. Because he's going for this hex right here. Uh, Helson's starting to come up this road here. He's coming down this way. And he's also coming up this way. So he's got a three-pronged attack aimed at cutting off Lan Chao from the rest of China. And if he does that, it's going to severely hamper our supply generating capabilities. So we are definitely in a rush to get stuff, you know, in here. As, me as much as possible, we're trying to get stuff into Ankang before he gets there. And it may be a tall order. So what I'm doing right now is I'm grabbing as many troops as I can and trying to put them in this hex up here. Well, hey, Tim, the nice thing is after this live stream is done, you can go back and watch the beginning of it. So it'll it'll fill in any pieces that you're missing. That's why I like these live streams. They turn into normal videos after after a little bit of time. So you can watch it. You didn't you won't actually miss anything. Right now, I'm just getting some troops moved into into this hex up here, because he's going to eventually try to get up there. Right, so we've done that. Is there anything else we can move? Nothing really. All right. So all up in Chungking. It's fine. We're building forts, we're building airfield. Here we're building forts. Building forts. Building fort. I 
If I see this unit start coming into Kukong, we're, we're bailing. He can have these bases. I don't care. Don't need them. Building forts there. Okay, so that all looks good down here. Let's build a fort here. Why not? Oh, we can't. No engineers. At least these guys are resting. They're resting. Oh, well, guess what? Wake up, guys. We gotta build some forts. And these guys should be building forts. They should be. They're not. Are these guys building forts? No. But they're in move mode. They need to be in combat mode. There we go. All right, so let's take a look. Uh, has he tried what Lodric done in North China? N well, if if so, Lodric came up this road this way. Um, it's too early for us to know for certain. Um, he could be coming up the road, but we don't have any visibility on it, Tim. So the question was: Has Lod has has Helson tried? What Lodric did in North China, and I consider North China to be anything up here. Lodric used this road and brought 800 AV, took Hami, Urimchi, and Wasu uh, by March 1942. And we don't see any evidence that he's doing it yet, but that doesn't mean that he isn't. We just don't see it. So he could be doing what Lodric is doing, but it's still too early to tell. What he is doing is he's going this way. Which was a very smart thing to do that Lodric never did quite figure out. So um, that's a that's a that's a threat to me, because he could cut he could flank everything in Sion from behind, and cut us off. So that that's definitely a big concern. Lodric never did figure out to go up the Iron King Road. So I need to start adjusting for that right away, and that's what we're doing. And I'm gonna just keep leaving units on this road. To slow him down as much as possible and force him to attack every single time. And every time he has to stop an attack, he loses a day of movement. And then these guys are going to die because they're disorganized and I can't even command them right now. Make sure everything's moving. I'm just checking everything to make sure it's all moving still, which it appears to be. I don't want anything stopping on the roads right now. Just getting everything moving. Hey, I, you know what? I, I kind of feel like that's all I can really do right now. There's not much else to do. We'll just do a quick check on some stuff here. Alright, so I think I'm about done with this turn. If anybody has any last questions, now's the time to ask. Otherwise, I'm going to shut her down. So I'm going to give you guys about one minute to come up with any last minute questions you may have, anything you want to see. And I'm going to do a quick little sweep around the map and just look at some random stuff to make sure everything is set the way it needs to be.
No questions? Well, then I think I'm done with this turn. So I'm going to go ahead and and uh, package this up, and I'm going to get it sent to health. And I think we've done all we need to do here, and we'll have to see what happens. So the big thing I'm looking for next turn is, uh, let's see, Keto, Keto Butai. Where is it going? Is it going to continue east? Is it going to head south? I need to know where he's going. So that's the big thing I'm going to be looking at there. Um, also, we expect there to be a lot of activity on Java next turn. So we can expect some naval engagements over here with these ships. Uh, a lot of activity here. And at some point soon, I'm going to need to figure out what to do with all these aircraft. I got to get him out of here because we've got... Almost a hundred aircraft at Bandung that can't stay there. So I need to pack them up and get them out. So Java is going to be hot next turn. The South Pacific is going to be hot next turn. Uh, let's see. China, we're going to have a couple land battles probably here. At least here. One land battle here. A lot of bombing. And then we'll see what happens. So uh, for those of you who watched this for so long, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed answering your questions for those of you that had some for me. And, um, yeah, I'm going to get this turn over to Helsin. He's usually pretty quick about running them, so you should see some results by this weekend. Um, and then, yeah, Tim, so if you have any questions on Tracker, just come out of our – just talk to me on Discord, and we'll, we'll help you out. I'm sure we can get it working. Uh, the key thing is is you want 32-bit Java. you got to have it. If you don't have a 32-bit Java in, on start on the computer, Tracker will not work. So make sure you do that. Follow my video. It'll explain it. But if you still have issues, let me know. We'll get it scored away for you because uh, I'm a big fan of Tracker. And I happen to be in touch with the guy that helped me. His name is Floyd uh, and Damien. Uh, I'm, I'm actually in contact with them. So if you ever need any extra help, I may be able to get a hold of them for you and answer your questions. So that's another cool resource. But anyway, I'm going to end this stream now. Get this term sent over to Helsin. Uh, thanks again for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you again soon. For those of you who live in the United States, happy Thanksgiving to you guys tomorrow. I know I'm going to have a good time with some friends and family. I hope you all do too. Catch you on the next one.